All right, what's going on you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys, a bodybuilding story, Michael Crizzo. Some more physique updates from Michael Crizzo, this time giving us some relative perspective of how big he actually is. Because he looks so big in his pictures and videos, I've seen people speculate, does he Photoshop them? Are they even real? How heavily edited are they? But in these recent posing videos that he did, you can see him next to not just regular people, but you can see him next to like gym rats, other people that actually lift. But it gives you some perspective on how big Michael Crizzo really is and how small he makes these guys look. Even though they're clearly lifters, they're clearly gym bros, they look like they don't even lift next to Michael Crizzo. And I thought these videos were also a useful update because of the fact that a few days ago, um, he posted to his story and shared his off-season weight, where he said he was like 303 pounds or something like that, and he looked pretty lean at that weight, and a lot of people were speculating that that wasn't his real weight. I saw people in the comments saying there's no way he weighs that much and looks that lean and vascular. But when you see him in this context, in videos like this next to regular people, it makes that weight extremely believable. This is no small man, and people keep saying that he's going to have a difficult time if he comes over to the IFBB, and what I keep saying is, I think it really is going to come down to his conditioning, because I think he's got every bit of size to hang with 99% of the guys in the IFBB, and it's going to be interesting to see him, you know, if he were able to get to a show that Rami is at, and he were able to make it into the same callout as Rami, that would be a very, very interesting comparison to see two guys of this size two guys that are close to 300 when they compete next to each other on a stage like the Olympia. Because a lot of people say, you know, the, the competition over in the other IFBB that Michael Crizzo participates in is a lot easier than the competition over here. But even if that's true, I still think he's got a physique that will be very competitive in this organization. Outside of the actual competition, so much of what makes bodybuilding interesting is the speculation in the commentary. And I think there's really no bigger speculation right now or bigger um, interesting story than what if, the what if Michael Crizzo came to this IFBB. We can clearly see in all his pictures and videos, he's got the contest track record to back it up. We can clearly see this guy's the real deal. But what we haven't seen yet is him come prove it on an IFBB Pro League stage. Now, next up in the news, I think this is a good segue here because Blessing and Michael Crizzo have a little bit of a rivalry themselves. Blessing posting a physique update, a little bit of a physique update, just his bicep here. And we're getting close to the five weeks out mark um, from that indie pro. And Michael Crizzo would call these, and has called these, baby biceps. Michael has done some response videos to, to Blessing's uh, bicep posts with his own bicep post. Now here would be something interesting, right? If Michael Crizzo just showed up at one of these shows that's coming up, the New York Pro, the Indie Pro, um, just one of these upcoming shows, because if I'm not mistaken, when Michael won his pro card, it was technically before the split of the IFBB. And again, that's a very complicated situation. But maybe the IFBB Pro League would still honor that pro card, not make him turn pro if he wanted to come over and compete in the IFBB Pro League. And theoretically, if they did that, there'd be no reason why he couldn't just randomly show up and compete in one of these shows if behind the scenes he got the approval um, for the pro card. He, you could see him at a show that Blessing's at. I don't think it's entirely unrealistic. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Now, next up in the news, let's do another fight story. I know some people love the fight story. Some people hate the fight stories. But another update on Martin Ford versus the Iranian Hawk. So, as you guys know by now, there's a back and forth between Martin Ford and the Iranian Hawk. Martin Ford was the first one to announce that the fight that was scheduled for April 30th has now since been postponed. And he blamed the Iranian Hawk for, for it being postponed, and essentially apply, implying that he was one that pulled out. So then the next day, the Iranian Hawk made his own video where he said Martin is the one that pulled out. He still wants to fight and that he's going to sue Martin Ford and then the promoters of the boxing match. And he basically blamed it on Martin. So someone addressed that. On one of Martin's recent comment sections, Richard George Randall says, You need to say something about who pulled out of the fight. The Hawk says that you pulled out, receiving five likes on his inquiry. Martin Ford responds and says, They say that a picture speaks a thousand words. Let's just say that what turned up was not what was sold to us or the investors. This followed by crying on TV and saying he wants to end his life. That was enough for us. Then he shows this picture um, clearly of the photoshopped Iranian Hawk picture and then what he looked like 
in real life. Now, I thought that was actually an interesting development to this story because it kind of implies that the Iranian hawk didn't pull out. It kind of implies that the promotion and the investors and Martin were unhappy with what he really looked like. The fact that he wasn't like this gigantic guy to come fight Martin Ford, it kind of implies they didn't want him as Martin's opponent anymore because of what showed up wasn't what was advertised. So it's hard to say what the truth is. It's probably somewhere in the middle. Um, But like I said, my guess is that this fight will never happen and that we will never see Martin Ford versus the Iranian Hawk. But I do think this is an interesting development because it it kind of uh, changes the narrative a little bit because that post, while it's true, I mean, he showed up clearly not looking like what he looked like on social media. That also doesn't mean that he pulled out because of it. Maybe the promoters just thought it was a liability or something. From the standpoint of him being so much smaller and less athletic than Martin, they were probably worried that either he was going to hurt the guy or the guy was going to hurt himself. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Now, next up in the news, Patrick Moore leaves his sponsor. So it was an interesting post that Patrick put up. He says, back to free agency. Definitely the fastest turnaround and overall unusual experience I've had with a sponsor. I'll elaborate more on this either on YouTube or here on IG Live, possibly along with show plans this year. So I wanted to elaborate on this a little bit. I've heard some rumors that there's a potential that Patrick would consider doing that Orlando Pro Show that we talked about Hassan Mustafa doing um, in open bodybuilding, by the way. That show is still like three months away. So when he says show plan, he left a comment, I think, on a post about the Orlando Pro. He left some comment on a post about the Orlando Pro, kind of implying that he was interested. So that's kind of my speculation, but who knows. Now, what was the supplement company he was with? It was a small company known as Unlocked Supplements. This is their Instagram right here. They only had 2,000 followers, and he was with them for a very short amount of time. A lot of people that were sending me his post because he's got the logo kind of canceled out on that post They're like, who was he even sponsored by? The company was called Unlock Supplements. That's about all I can tell you. It's a relatively little-known company. I don't know much about it. And I'm sure that we're going to get a very interesting story from Patrick Moore when he comes out with what exactly happened between him and the sponsors. It seems like there's been a lot of interesting uh, bodybuilders being dropped or leaving sponsorship stories lately. And I guess there will probably be another story with who decides to pick him up. A lot of people are saying Hostile Supps. A lot of people are saying Revive, Raw. Axe and Sledge. Someone someone give our boy Patrick Moore a good sponsorship, though. I think he deserves it. Now, next up in the news, we've got an old-school bodybuilding story, an update on Bill Pearl. Bill Pearl actually is one of my favorite golden-era bodybuilders. He's currently 91 years old. He won the Mr. Universe competition throughout three different decades. He won it in the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. Now, on Bill's Facebook page, which I follow, there was a post put up by his wife, and I was very relieved to see that it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It looked like from the beginning it was going to be announcing that Bill had passed away, but that was not the case. And by the way, 91 years old for a bodybuilder as successful as Bill Pearl was, that's an accomplishment in and of itself. But it says, to all of our Facebook friends, the article I just posted was prepared by Bill on Tuesday morning. It had rained the night before, but the sun came out, and he decided to go up the hill and mow around the barn. He was using the smaller Craftsman riding mower, and it got stuck on a squirrel mound, so he put it in reverse to back off it, and it jumped, and being close to an embankment, rolled over the edge and came to rest against the barn on top of Bill's back. I was working in the house and realized I hadn't heard the mower in a while, and I walked up the hill to check on him. When I first saw the mower upside down and had him under it, I panicked and ran the rest of the way, fearing the worst. The best was bad enough. He was conscious, but totally pinned face down in the grass. She continues, I knew I'd have to leave him that way to call 911. Just as I stood up to leave, a truck came up to drive with two strong guys, a friend and his son, there to take a workout in the barn. Together, they were able to lift the machine up off Bill's back without injuring him any further. Then they called for an ambulance, and they were able to apply a neck brace strap and strap him onto a backboard safely to take him to the hospital. After x-rays and a CAT scan and an MRI, a neurologist determined that he had a compression fracture of his T10 vertebrae, among other things. He was scheduled for surgery the next day. He endured six hours of very complicated surgery, and praise the Lord, he's resting uncomfortably in the hospital and should be home in a few days. It may be a while until he can sit at the computer again, but he'll be back. We have many friends and family to thank for their prayers and good wishes. We are so grateful. So I wanted to share that story because Bill is such a legendary bodybuilder, and I feel like people, not enough people give some of these guys their flowers until they're already gone. 
And maybe the next time we would have talked about Bill Pearl would have been when he passed away. So I wanted to include a Bill, a Bill Pearl story of him surviving an accident. And again, 91 years old, achieving all the things that he achieved in bodybuilding. It's really actually kind of inspirational to see him still alive and going strong. And the fact that he survived this, I think, is pretty incredible. So shout out to Bill Pearl. We are definitely wishing him a speedy recovery. So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet already. But make sure you leave a like on the video. That helps out the most. Click the bell notification icon if you haven't clicked that. That helps out a ton as well. Never miss an upload if you have that bell notification clicked. Love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.